Okay. First one, all right angles are congruent. And you're probably like, oh, really? Thanks for the update. But this needs to be put in the proof. All right. Here's where you're probably going to use it. Hey, remind me again when you add and subtract how many pairs of equal quantities you need. Two, right? And if I only give you once, the second one usually came from reflexive. Everyone agree? Well, maybe not anymore. Maybe the other pair is going to be a pair of right angles you want to subtract or add. All right, so that might be your second pair now. So let's take a look at the first one we have here and where this would apply and how do I use it. Uh, symbol again, what do I have the symbol here in between AB and BD and in between FG and DG? That's my perpendicular symbol. Are you able to mark your diagram right now with something? Yes. Let's see it. Let's see it. If you know these two segments are perpendicular, there should be a symbol going in. If these FG and DG are perpendicular, another symbol going in, hopefully. What are you guys putting on your diagram and where specifically is it going? What are you putting on your diagram? My right angle symbol in two spots. You should have one on angle A, B, D, and you should have a right angle on F, G, D. You also have a pair of congruent angles. Please mark those. We always mark our diagram before we start making a plan. So A, B, C is congruent to F, G, E. And then you can get your statements reason set up and at least write in your givens. And then we'll start making a plan. All right, ready to roll? One second. All right. You guys that already finished up, look at what look at the two angles I'm asking you to prove congruent. Find those two angles I'm asking you to prove congruent. Angle DBC and angle DGE. And maybe start thinking to yourself, how could I, knowing what I know now, that I have a right angles there and I have a pair of congruent angles, how could I get DBC and DGE congruent? And it's some, don't make something up. Don't make anything up. It's something we've used, something I've already provided you. All right, do not start making things up on me. Anybody see the word bisector or midpoint in this proof? Yeah, me neither. Don't bring it up. So automatically, you know, it's not halves of equal quantities. Get it out of there. All right, don't start popping words in that aren't there. But something we've have done in the past what could I do with the right angles here and the two given angles that are congruent to get to these two, which I need to prove congruent? Yeah. I could subtract them. Everyone agrees. Does everybody see? Ready? Take this right angle here, FGD, take away the congruent angle, and what's left is angle DGE, one of the angles I need. Same thing over here. Take away the congruent angle from the right angle. You're left with angle DBC. So does everyone see we need subtraction? Okay, a lot more than that though. Are we okay on why it's subtraction? Because that's the first hurdle you gotta get over. It's subtraction. All right, now you start thinking, all right, I gotta subtract, how many pairs of equal quantities do I need? Two, but I only gave you what? One. I didn't give you two. Did we ever say that these two angles here are congruent? No, I didn't give you that. You need to say that and we're gonna say that right now. The only pair I have are congruent is right there. I need the second pair, which are the right angles. So this is where this new theorem comes into play that all right angles are congruent. But, whoa, whoa, before we start going nuts, if you're going to tell me right angles are congruent, you need to have right angles first in your proof. Have I written anywhere that I have right angles? Perpendicular doesn't equal right angles. That doesn't, no, 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 no. 
Have I mentioned anywhere in my statements that I have right angles? No. So you need to do that first before you tell me they're congruent. So the next step here is going to be angle. Name one of the right angles. DBA. Angle DBA and angle, name the other right angle. FGD are right angles. We have used this reason the very first day of the unit. What told you they were right angles? Mm, I'd probably accept that. That's fine. I'd like to tell, it, tell me a little more. Perpendicular lines are congruent. Form right angles. Now, if you put definition of perpendicular lines, I would accept it. That would be fine. Okay. Now that you told me the right angles, what do you know about those two right angles? What do I know about DBA and FGD other than the right angles now? They're congruent. There is, ready? Here is the second pair of equal quantities that I'm going to need to subtract. So DBA is congruent to FGD. And this now is my new theorem, which says all right angles are congruent. Again, if you're going to tell me right angles are congruent, you better have what already in your proof provided that they are right angles. That may be given. You may need to write it yourself, just like we did in statement two. Now do you have two pairs of equal quantities? Now can I subtract? OK, now this should be no big deal. Tell me the two angles you're going to subtract. Angle DBA minus ABC or CBA. And that's equal to angle FGD minus EGF or FGE by subtraction. And things don't change around here. What's after subtraction usually? Substitution. Wow, we moved up to five steps, huh? Whew. You guys are getting out of the novice level, huh? Maybe going to the beginner level. You are far, far from proof master, though. You'll have to earn that title throughout the year. DBC and DGE. Okay, whoa, whoa. Let's see how we're, we're all right here. Everyone all right? Subtraction. So you needed how many pairs? Two. I only gave you this pair here. Where'd the other pair come from? Right angles being congruent. Yep. All good? All right. Now, if we can do this for right angles, the exact same thing can be done for two straight angles. OK? Two exact things can be done for straight angles, all right? So A, B, C, and F, D, E, are, okay, so I'm, tell, I'm told that they are straight angles. Everyone, you got a pair of congruent angles. Go ahead and mark those and get your statements reason set up, and we'll talk. Hopefully you're marking the correct ABF right here, guys. Hey, ABF, it's on the outside here. And EDC.
And then once you have those written in, look at my prove and look at the two angles I'm trying to prove congruent. All right, here we go. Everyone all set? Okay, everyone see the two angles I'm trying to prove congruent? CBF, this angle right here, CBF, and FDC, these two angles right here, the ones next to the congruent angles. All right, so we know these are straight angles, and we know these two are congruent. What, so what can I do with my straight angles and the congruent angles to get to the ones next to them? What can I do with the straight angles and these congruent angles? I can do what? Subtract. Everyone in agreement? Subtract. You know, what am I going to ask next? Oh, no, I'm not even before that. What am I going to ask about? If I'm going to, if you're going to tell me to subtract, I need two pair. How many did I give you? One. Where's the other pair going to come from? The straight angles. Now. Unlike the last proof, do I need to tell you they're straight angles? Why not? It's already given. Okay, I don't like last proof you had to tell me they're right angles because I didn't give that to you. Here, I told you they're straight angles. So we can go right to saying, what about ABC and FDE? They are congruent. Angle ABC congruent to angle FDE using our new theorem, which says all straight angles are congruent. Do you see the difference between this one and the last one? Last one, I was not given right angles. I had to tell you there were right angles and why. Here, hey, convenient. I was giving it to you. You're welcome. Do you have two pairs of equal quantities now? Yes, no? Yeah, I do. The given pair and the straight angle. So tell me what we're subtracting if you think it's subtraction. Angle. ABC minus angle ABF is equal to angle, the other straight angle, FDE minus EDC subtraction. And then as we know, after subtraction or addition, Substitution. Questions from you guys? Anything? We okay on why it's subtraction here? As you read through the next proof, anything just come right out of the page to you, like a three-dimensional object there? Anybody see anything? Bisector, bisector, don't you? Meaning, where am I going to turn my direct my attention to as far as reasons go? Fat, ha halves of equal quantities are equal. Nice job. All right, now, hey, look. I know what today's topic has been. I get it. It's angles. Does anybody see perpendicular lines or right angles up here? No, me neither. Don't say it. Anybody see anything about straight angles up here? No, don't say it. This has nothing to do with straight angles or right angles. This is just halves of equal quantities. All right. I am going to come around right now, watch you and your group. All this is is a review proof. It has nothing to do with right angles or straight angles. Okay. So I'm going to come around, take a look at what you guys are doing as a group, seeing if we really understand this concept of halves of equal quantities. This is not a two-step proof.
you're using halves of equal quantities, you need to tell me you're taking half of this and it's equal to this. Okay, not by halves of equal quantities though. When it's a halves of equal quantities proof, halves of equal quantities should be your very last step. Okay, why, how did you know it was going to be taken half of? What told you up here you're going to take half of it? Definition of bisector. Then halves of equal quantities are equal. Okay, the only time I use substitution is for addition and subtraction. Okay, I'm just going to get going up here. Uh, you should be telling me you're taking half of angle EAB. And what's half of angle EAB equal to? Angle 1. And half of FBC is equal to angle 2. How did I know I was going to take half? What alerted me to that in the givens? Definition of a bisector. The halves of equal quantities comes at the very end. And then the last step should be halves of equal quantities are equal. Okay. Again, you guys have more than enough info to start that homework for tomorrow night, but it's your call.